So hello, Amy. Hello, Hi, everyone. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> not an issue. Not an issue. So uh, we'll be just waiting for a few more minutes so that more people okay. can join on the panelist, and then we'll be starting the session. First of all, we'll give you an intro about ICS, okay. and then we'll be starting the community conversation today. Sounds good. So we have. Uh, Mr. Suresh is also one of our mental health practitioner. Namaste. And, uh, namaste. Namaste. Kaise hai aap? How are you, ma'am? Fine, and yourself? Very, thank you. I'm also fine. It's nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's time. Adiba, we can start with the intro section so that we can go further because it's just a one hour session. So without wasting okay. any time so adiba is a mental health volunteer she is uh, associated with ics so she will be giving a brief idea about that how ics is working and doing awareness in the mental health field so over to you adiba uh, no you are not audible adiba No, Adipa, you're not audible. Sir, audio is off. Or it might be she's having an issue with the headphone. No problem. Yeah. So I will start the session as of now. So thank you, everyone, and to joining in this beautiful community conversation on mental health. And uh, and I welcome everyone. that you have come to share your passion and expertise on mental health and behavior and uh, so that we can help our family and community so that's appreciated that this evening you are giving your precious time to us and so there is a uh, there is no question that this year is a very challenging year for everyone yeah. so co- covid just gone and you know the routine has changed the pattern of our you know living pattern has changed a lot we have isolated and due to this uh, you know uh, we are having some kind of mental health issues are going on and it is important that uh, we need to change this pattern and we need to work upon that and recently also i have gone through an article in which i can see that out of five children or adults one people or one children having a mental health issue whether it's a depression stress anxiety and very important substance abuse so this is very alarming situation for all of us it's not in india it's everywhere everywhere people are having this kind of mental health challenges so in our social or you can say in our social area and we need to create the awareness so we need a huge force and ics is trying to create a force or mental health task force in association with the government of india that we can produce more counselor more school psychologist more psychotherapist in our society so that they can help people and raise the awareness so this data that i have told you it's very alarming and very serious problem for everyone so thank you everyone for coming for this beautiful conversation and uh, so ics is organization which is a working in this mental health field and we are trying to give a support system to the society in the terms of mental health uh, we works in two department we do one to one counseling for various psychological problems we we provide uh, assistance to anyone having mental health issues and we have a education program as well we have a training department in which we provide trainings to the people so i so that they can learn about psychology and you know tell people about that unless you don't have the education you cannot give that service or you cannot help anyone so it's important to raise the awareness so we are trying to do that and due to this we are a proud member of uh, international applied psychology association internationally acclaimed also uh, we have around 5000 plus alumni students with us who are working in india and also from other part of world we are having students 
And so today's uh, we have Amy Zwilling, if I pronounce it right. Very good. Thank you. So, so as a pan uh, guest panelist or as a guest speaker, uh, she's from United States and uh, she's working in this mental health field as a professional, providing therapy services. And also, once uh, when I go through the LinkedIn ID, so, so it's mentioned that she's giving free support also. So that is very appreciated. Thank you so much, Ami. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> so you're welcome and we can start this conversation. Okay. Um, I have found myself, um, like you said, it's been hard during COVID. I have my own mental health challenges. When I was nine, my mom passed away of cancer. And it was really hard growing up as a child without a mom. Um, that's, that was my closest support system. And my dad was always, you know, up till then had been out working most of the time. So he didn't really know. I have a, a brother four years older. He didn't really know how to go about raising kids on his own. So he sent us to school the next day after our mom passed away. And, and I find like, that's really unfortunate because I ended up having depression and an eating disorder when I was little as like an unhealthy coping strategy. So I decided to go into the mental health field having not had what I needed growing up. And I wanna prevent other people from having those same struggles all throughout their life and not having that kind of help that they need. So that's, that's why I entered the mental health field. Okay. So, so I'm happy it, to answer any questions that any of you have or. So it's very unfortunate that you lost your mother at, at very low age. So it's very unfortunate. And uh, so just like you can say it's a trauma for you because that's a yeah. childhood you are, uh, because mother is a support system of, of the family. She right. teaches you how to do in and out things. So that's very appreciated. So my first question is that how you, you know, deal with this kind of challenges when your mom passed away or does anyone is there for you? Um, thankfully, I had, um, when I was growing up, it was called in the United States, it was called guidance counselor at school. And now in the school, they're called professional school counselor. So right. in my, in my um, graduate school training program, I had the opportunity to do, it's called a dual track program where I could get two teacher, two licenses in the mental health field in one program. I had to do an extra year of internship for, I now I'm a school, I, I'm not working as a school counselor, but I have a school counseling license and a clinical counseling license and the master's degree. It was a three-year program. So my school counselor growing up, um, he contacted my dad and said, your daughter um, has an eating disorder because that's what I thought I can't control my mom's sick and dying, but I can control how much food I put in my body or not a lot of food, you know, so he said, you need your daughter should come to my grief group at school. He had a group of kids who had gone through traumas. Some people, you know, maybe their parents were going through a divorce or some people had lost a parent. So we would talk as a group, like how we were doing, and uh, we would play games and talk about, you know, kind of relate the games to our feelings, because it's hard for kids to just talk about their feelings. Sometimes you have to do play therapy or art therapy. So thankfully, today, I'm really proud to say and thankful that that's my mentor. He's still in my life all these years later. And and so I, I contact him when I want to know how he handled a certain situation in his profession, you know, um, through the years. So it's really, I'm so thankful that I had him. And he, again, was a reason I decided to enter, enter the mental health field so I could be like him, um, you know, or help people like he helped me. And also, I had the opposite experience in high school my school counselor was not supportive and I, she was very discouraging saying, you know, don't, 
don't go into, don't bother trying to get into that college. You won't get in because my grade, I was depressed. So my grades weren't that great, you know, in high school. So if that answers your question, I did have a good support system, not at home, but thankfully at school. Right. So support system is there, but many people, many students or many children don't have the support system. As I going through the data, so 80% people doesn't get any support. In Very India, I cannot, uh, I don't have the data of US, but still it should be around 60 to 70 percent. Just an idea. I they have don't get the support. Teenagers, my own children, um, one is in his second year of high school this year, and one is in his last year. And I saw my younger son experience depression when the kids had to start staying home from school and doing online school. He, he was really missing his time with his friends. So when it became safer to, to be around people, we would say, you can be with your friends outside because you know it's not as easy to get COVID in the open air. So we did see it even with our own children, depression. It's scary, right. you no, know, it's really scary to see that. So. See, it's still a stigma around us in our society that people doesn't talk about mental health and mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are also trying to spread the awareness. So first of all, as you told me that you've gone through that phase, you've gone through that mental trauma or you can say mental health issue. And that brings you the interest to you know learn more about this thing. The curiosity, right. you got it from there. So that mm -hmm. is good. So we need to have that curiosity to learn about mental health so that we can help our families also, our community also, and others also. So it will be giving a good result to everyone. So mm -hmm. all people can live a fruitful life. Right. Right. So thank you for sharing your views. So sure. you're welcome. So my next question is uh, to Mr. Suresh. So Mr. Suresh Khandegar is a very senior person and uh, he's also on our panelist as a guest speaker. So sir, uh, so, so uh, my question is that, what are the major causes of mental health in our society? Can you tell me some causes or you can throw some light? Sir, you are on mute. Sir, you are on mute. I think I'm not able to hear you. Mental health issues play an important role in our life, personal life, family life, as well as our social life. There are a lot of issues or a lot of causes which give, makes an effect on our life. Disturb family relations, uh, any trauma, any abuse, any addiction, and so many. Yes, you are right. So why don't we communicate with our family members or why don't we talk? Why don't we admit that, yes, this is a time now that we need to have a consultation or we need to visit a counselor or psychologist for this? Everywhere it is seen that uh, having uh, advice from counselor or going to counseling uh, people hesitate or uh, people are on a denial mode that there is no problem. We are okay. We are happy. But it is not a fact. And something, if anything goes wrong or it increases, then the situation comes and then we have to take more and more actions. Right. Is it right, so, ma'am? Ami, ma'am, is it right? Ami, I think uh, Mr. Sway is asking. I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you repeat the question? I didn't know you were speaking directly to me. Okay. Uh, Sway, sir, you can repeat the question, please. Hello. 
Yes, what Ms. was the question you asked me? I'm sorry. Uh, may I ask one question? Yes. Is social economic condition of a client is responsible for mental health or any correlation in between that? Um, the reason, yeah, I believe it, the, so, the economy, do, do you mean um, people are struggling financially? Is that what you mean? And it's causing depression? I think that has something to do with it. Sure, people lost money, people lost their jobs, and that causes stress and anxiety and depression. I believe you're right. Mm -hmm. Right, so economy is also a major concern for stress, depression. Yes, and also, people can't always afford to see a counselor, which is why I'm giving the counseling for free because I've been in the position where I couldn't afford it or I was racking up more and more and more bills. And then that causes more stress, even like your mental health care causes more stress because it costs too much money. So I'm offering the care for free so that everybody can afford it. I think it's important yeah. if you need the care, you should be able to have it. Definitely, we need to uh, help people who are in need because it might be due to financial issues. They cannot uh, you know, take counselings or cannot have this kind of services with them. So ICS is also providing free counselling services Thank to you. the needy one. And uh, so that we can build a better people in future. Because as you told that you have that support system in your school and colleges. So now in India, currently we are getting awareness in 2022, or you can say it in 2021. From past one or two years, now people are really interested to know more about. So in school or colleges, we are having this kind of activities, uh, like some meditation, some uh, you know, some breathing techniques we are having with children. So now government of also taking care of this thing and taking initiative on this kind of you know, activities that we should, you know, introduce in society and in schools. So, so uh, my next question, Amy, with, to you that, so there are some simple techniques, simple coping techniques are there. So that we can use daily wise in, uh, that include in our daily life routine, or you can say in daily routine of our um, timetable. So can you tell us some more no, some coping st strategies or techniques about that that can bring changes i feel like as a therapist um or anybody who's trying to help other people with their mental health i i don't think they're the same techniques necessarily work for everybody so as a therapist for me i always like to spend the first session, first of all, asking the person what feels important for them to talk about with me so that I know what their, their biggest challenges are, that the reason they're coming to work with me. And then I think it's good to find out what, what their hobbies are because a lot of times those are things that we can go to when we're having a tough time with stress, anxiety, depression. For me, I, for myself, I know like being in the sunshine and um, getting exercise, those are natural mood boosters. So taking a walk when it's warm and sunny, those are like two things that can really naturally lift your mood without even seeing a counselor, without taking medication. So um, for other kinds of therapy that I'm offering, it's, it's um, art activities. <laughs> Because sometimes people, when they draw or color, I don't know if you guys have those um, adult coloring books, medallas, um, those are therapeutic for me to color. Um, music, listening to music, I sing and write song lyrics. Um, those are all things that we can do with, without even having to talk to another person. If those help, is, 
that kind of along the line of what you're thinking or do you want um like uh, theories or you know like there's cognitive <clears throat> behavioral therapy i don't know if you guys are familiar with that one um that's the one where you it's a triangle there's um your thoughts can affect your behaviors or your thoughts can affect your feelings and your feelings can affect your behaviors so if you can interrupt that starting at any point like if you try to instead of saying like nothing's ever going to get better you can say tomorrow is, could be a better day and then you're going to feel more hopeful than you would if you said nothing's ever going to be good you know and then you might make a change like I'm going to try this new job opportunity because I feel hopeful so the, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really helpful technique that I have found that works with people and for myself right so but due to you know uh, many people don't have the time because of the hectic schedule they uh, they avoid their hobbies they just focus on the work or and uh, so so time management is also important do you think for for mental health what could you repeat that last part please time management oh what do yeah do you think that time management is important for mental health absolutely um people who every i feel like it's always getting worse like work 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 i have to work so much because i need more money but I was thinking about this a few minutes ago I wanted to mention so thanks for getting me to that point. Um I have found in my life when like you get we talked about trauma when you get another trauma on top of the last tra trauma on top of the last trauma eventually your body and your everything your health starts to break down in all the areas I think. So we have to really make time for our self care otherwise our body is going to shut down and our mind is going to shut down and then we're not going to be a very effective at work anyway right so so we have to balance our time a little bit of time for exercise a little time for healthy eating a little bit of time for spending time with our family and friends who are good to be around and then we're going to be more productive at work so that's really a good point time management is so so important right and on that part we uh, lack every time we lack on that and uh, we don't give time to our families even we hardly spoke to them when we uh, you know go to our home from our offices we hardly talk to them while if we are eating food or something like that we only chit chat for few minutes i think so that is very important to talk with family spend time with them yeah exactly and uh, spend quality time it's not time we can introduce some activities with children with family by playing games because in the older times we do that we play lots of indoor games not outdoor games like right. uh, in the covid time uh, we enjoyed like uh, in india it's very popular ludo there's a game <laughs> so at that time many people uh, connected with that and so in covid many people have a very good time it's not like that the mental health is always on that peak many people have very good time very jolly time they uh, you know cook uh, good food uh, share their thoughts you know talk about because they are in their home and isolated mm -hmm. so it's very important to spend quality time with family and uh, work upon your hobbies manage your time in a particular way make a schedule that yes uh, we should have this follow this schedule because once we we went to the school we also followed that timetable over there that this is the first period this is the second one then yeah. we'll have a lunch break right so we should introduce that thing in our in, you know daily routine life we should have yeah. proper uh, you know you can say self self time we need to give to us so thank you ami for sharing this thought so guys uh, Uh, everyone is uh, welcome on this platform so guys please switch on your camera mehreen priya divya kavita vaibhavi sharan so i mean this all people are the uh, you know are from mental health field this all people are interested and working in this field so i request everyone to participate if you have any question or if you want to share your thoughts your expertise so please share us 
your passion because you all are passionate about this right that's why sir, you are here sir may i one one more question yes yeah, sir sure for last two years we faced a black period like corona pandemic in that period all of our students children started working on on going school or on platform on the uh, screen okay mobile so right. more cases of violence are seen abuse is increased and oropancies in the children are also increased screen addiction and mobile addiction has increased so what is the or what could be the role of parents let us not go to counselor let us have a first dialogue in our family itself so what could be the role of parents so amy can you throw some light on this parents are extremely important i was just reading something um the other day about how parents of teenagers are kind of uh, they they don't real they're kind of very vague they don't ask specific questions they are just say like how are you and a lot of times the kids will just say fine you know like what what does that really mean like i don't think they're really fine you know they they definitely have something going on when you're a teenager even if there is no covid you have yeah. hormones and relationship trying out relationship you know it's hard to be a teenager even when there's nothing big going on in the world so asking specific questions like how are your classes going do you like your teachers have you made any new friends um is there anybody you're interested in like i i have this joke kind of that i have with my sons i have two teenage sons and I don't care if they are interested in boys or girls or I say do you like any girls do you like any boys do you like any polka dotted people you know like I just want you to be happy like so they know that there's nothing really off limits that they can't talk to me about so I I think it's so important for us to to let our kids know we're really interested in everything that's going on in our life so that that's what I think the role of parents are just keeping in touch with how our kids are really doing and asking so okay. you can say that we need to so you you need to say that we need to communicate with the children as the part of time management only because sometimes what we do we avoid uh, this kind of th- things like talk talking to children spending time with them asking about their routine that what they have done in the school so as a uh, as a parent our job is to uh you know communicate with them and sometimes we only provide them the you know mobile addiction we uh, we introduce the mobile addiction to them we given the mobile right no one has given us them because i think they're uh, they always were... watching us kids are always watching what we're doing even when they don't we don't think they are so we have to be careful of what if if we they see us drinking too much alcohol they might think that might help me you know if i'm having a hard time with smoking right. or doing drugs or you know be good role absolutely model absolutely right absolutely right absolutely right so uh, uh children what children see they do that is absolutely correct so uh, mehreen uh, she is also a, a practicing uh, psychologist or say practicing mental health so can you share something on uh, that how we can improve our community uh, good evening sir ma'am uh, actually what i found uh, is that there as there is lot of generation gap we are not able to speak our children freely what what is going on in their mind somewhere in the houses we are following like uh some there are some taboos on speaking uh, on talking with friends on some topics so their children are lacking back 
बिकॉज दे थिंक कि लाइक इन इंडिया देर आर सम टॉपिक्स वेर पेरेंट्स और ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स डोंट लाइक टू टॉक विद द चिल्ड्रेन सो दे कीप दे वॉट एवर द क्वेश्चन अराइजेज अमंग चिल्ड्रेन दे स्केर्ड ऑफ शेयरिंग आस्किंग विद चिल्ड्रन विद द फैमिली मेंबर्स एंड दे गो आउट between their friends they talk and then so it's better if the family comes first and tell the children about um, all the, those things which are uh, not uh, better to get uh, what children get uh, better from uh, discuss among friends it's better if the family members interact with the children and they start talking on ev- on each and every topic keep aside as a taboo right right and thank you so much we have to actually pay, uh, pay, family should be very friendly with the children now the generation is totally different right. as it is a 21st century generation and they the world is in on their fingers as yeah. we all know so they are getting uh, all the knowledge but it is the duty of the parents or the family members to initiate and to Uh, speak and to behave friendly with the children so that they can share everything and they don't go on the wrong path right thank, thank you, you so much thank you so much marin uh, for sharing your thoughts so anyone would like to speak on on mental health i think jubeli uh, if i pronounce it right unless and until there is a good relations and have a dialogue in the family right it is not possible at least we can do in the evening or at night we can get together on our dining table and have a dialogue with our children otherwise it is not possible everybody is engaged in everybody business so where to talk with our children or when to talk with our children when they are going to ventilate their views so it could be the solution i according to me is it right sir yeah definitely sir because uh, if you discuss your whole day or you can recap your whole day in, in the front of the family yeah. so you will able to understand that what kind of challenges we all are facing yeah. if there are four members in the family and we, if we discuss the whole day in a very you know few minutes or 5 to 10 minutes that what you have done today either it's a uh, housewife either it's a working professional if we communicate this kind of thing you know, we can recap our whole day and then we can understand that yes at that point of time i was you know having some kind of stress anxiety at that time yeah. and uh, that is very normal so because daily if we if we are living the life daily have we are having some challenges but sometimes yeah. we ignore that <clears throat> that leads to a very critical situation yeah that leads to mental health problems and physical problems yeah so i was thinking so. if we it's better to have a an unco- a little bit uncomfortable conversation be ahead of time than like end up in a traumatic situation with a family member that's really going to be uncomfortable in a huge way so better to to have a little discomfort with a, a talk than a huge crisis that's one way we adults can look at having those uncomfortable conversations with the kids i think right so anyone wants to share something sharon is there so i think i saw first time jubeli can you introduce yourself uh hi i am irish jubeli parilla and i am a student from philippines in the university being uh having sometimes uh an uncomfortable conversation with the family or having a uh, encountered problems sometimes we don't need to talk but we need to be there just you know the word um catharsis uh in 
psychology. Um, sorry, but I don't know. Um, I don't know that which or what book because it's just um internalization. Uh, catharsis is just a word from supporting system. We just need to be there, embrace, just listen, and being um a teenager in this generation, we just only want a listener, a support. We just need someone to understand us, to voice out our problems or our thoughts because um, there's a lot of things that makes us pressure or stress. And sometimes um, it makes us um, to have uh, mental health problems. So I just um, only say here that um, we need only to be there. It is what it is. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. So communication and listening. Listening is very important. Yeah. So as a role of a counselor or a psychologist, you should have that listening skills. I, uh, and listening skills, it's not mandatory for a psychologist or counselor. It's for everyone. Yeah. If you're not listening anything, we are not focusing. We are not focusing to that person. Or, or we are not uh, respecting that person. Yes, so sometimes. we should listen. Yeah, so we should listen to our elders also and uh, to our younger people also. That yes, something is there. If he's speaking and he is coming out, so if something is there, we need to identify that. So by listening in a proper manner, we can get to know about that thing. And definitely solutions are there. There's solution is everywhere. We just need to find it and come out uh, from your comfort zone. If there is yeah. a problem, there is a solution. It's always there. So we sometimes ignore that <coughs> and that leads to mental health issues. It's all about your emotions and behavior, how you control it, how you react it. Right. Thank you so yeah. much. So anyone, uh, Suresh, sir, anything you want to share more? I think uh, other people sir, are thank muted, you. But Thank you. Uh, recently, we have launched a memory cafe for senior citizens. Okay. Nowadays, uh, many people are facing the problem of memory loss or weakage of memory. So it is necessary to identify whether it is a dementia or it is a normal aging process. So we help senior citizens by taking a few tests and identify the stage of the dementia and give activities, brain activities, then few games, exercise, then a diet. And uh, this has proved to be helpful for maintaining their mental health also. It's a memory cafe. A, of course, you might be knowing all these things, but we have recently launched it and it has found to be fruitful. Right, sir, right. So it's otherwise, very appreciated. Yeah, otherwise I teach uh, mindfulness meditation and counseling for senior citizens. But this memory cafe has added a lot. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, my next question, Ami, is that at what point of time we need to admit that, yes, we are having some serious challenges. Now it's time to talk. Yeah. W when is the alarming situation? You can tell. Um, I think it's when you notice that you're not functioning as well as you have been or in the same way you function for a long time. I know during COVID, I found myself not wanting to even go out for a walk because I just felt like everything I heard was so awful. Like everyone's getting sick. People are dying. Um, you know, people are losing their jobs. It was so depressing that it's enough to like make you just want to put the blankets over your head. Um, when you're, you know, the, the usual depression thing, the things that you hear, like you're not interested in, in your regular activities that usually make you happy. Um, you're having sleeping problems. You can't, you wake up in the middle of the night with nightmares or you can't fall asleep. You don't want to eat or you're eating too much. 
all of like when you just plain can't function anymore, like or it seems like you're headed in that direction. When when you notice those, it's better to to act on it rather than wait till it all falls apart. You know, so paying right. attention. We have to pay attention to ourselves as just like we have to pay attention to other people. So what are the changes that, because automatically uh, you told us that uh, you will be unproductive, you will be, uh, you know, having low interest, low self-esteem, you'll yeah. be there, uh, you're not able to eat properly. So these are the symptoms that, so we need to admit at that time that yes, something is going wrong, wrong, right, in our society. Then, then we need to admit it because fake, uh, faking uh, to be strong, it's not a right solution. That yes, I am strong. I can uh, cope up with it automatically. It will be not done. So by admitting it that yes, this is a certain point of time. I am having this kind of stress from you know either it's a workplace stress, you know, is a homemaker is there, housewives are there. They are also having some stress in their home by doing as usual. They are doing. They don't have any other work to do. So we need to break that chain. We need to break that pattern. Introduce something and uh, in our life so that we can be productive because stress and de-stress both have different uh, results right so if you're having a stress you will be productive and if you have distress you will be less productive yeah right so we need to work upon that thank you so much thank you anyone has any thing to share so this is an open platform we are here not to talk on you know scientific research or something on that you can share your experience sharon you would like to speak divya mr praveen yeah yeah so we, please introduce yourself first of all well, hello good evening sir and ma'am uh, i'm sharon from manipur university i'm currently in my final year msc psychology uh Recently, um, I, it's a very basic common question, but uh, we know it's not possible for us to control alcohol in our society, but for people who wants to give up, what's the best solution we as a psychologist or therapist can help them? Yeah. I like to say, um, if you are abusing alcohol, drinking too much, you are still going to have the same problems that you had before you started abusing the alcohol. And then you're going to have more problems on top of that because, you know, like you feel good for a real short amount of time when you drink, but alcohol is a depressant. So eventually you're going to feel worse than you did before you started drinking. And then, you know, like if, if you have a job and you're drinking too much, you're, you're not going to probably be able to function well enough um you're and if you're in school like yourself you're not going to be able to study and do very well on your exams if if you're just numbing out on alcohol so and as far as how to go about getting help um it's i think it's sometimes helpful to talk to someone who's close to you and, and you know let them know that you're struggling and, and maybe have somebody with you when you reach out for help so you're not feeling like totally um out there on your own I guess going to help to get help from total strangers to have somebody to go alongside you even if it's make a phone call or go to a meeting. Does that help? Mm, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. Good luck in your last year of school. Mm -hmm. Pardon, ma'am. Good luck in your last year of school. I bet that's exciting. I'm not able to get the... Good luck, Sharon, for your <laughs> final year. I think you are pursuing yeah. your final year in MSc. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good luck. So, you know, every time, if we can say, if we are doing something, we have two thoughts. Either you can say, we should do it, or can I do it, or can I avoid it? 
so there are two thoughts every time everything in everything so we need to uh, understand about the correct option we need to choose the correct option that which will be beneficial for us right so either it's anything either choosing the right direction or the right path or guidance so we need to listen and we need to take care of that so thank you so much ami for sharing your experience welcome uh, so anything else you want to ask or if you want to talk i'm curious oh. i'm curious about a little bit more about what you're doing i didn't get to read a whole bunch um are are you a school no we are an organization which is working in mental health field as okay. in the introduction part we have given you so indian counseling services is working in india on the mental health part and we provide one to one counseling for various psychological problems as well we provide some training programs for aspiring psychologists school counselors so we have some training program bunch of training programs we provide some learning on counseling psychology clinical psychology psychotherapy we provide so this kind of services we are providing right now in india great thank you for doing that thank you so much so because this continuous work uh, due to this we need more people so i i fo- always focus on that so without the people we cannot fill this gap that we have in this society we need more counselor we need psychologists so in every house we need a counselor in every house we need a counselor so that is very important yeah and uh, so thank you everyone to sharing your thoughts in this evening uh yes and uh can i ask miss ami something sir yeah definitely uh, uh is there any therapy that can you forget your trauma or nightmares yes Um there's a it here um in the United States it's called EMDR have you ever heard of that like the letters e, it stands for eye movement desensitization therapy um you could look that up online it has to do with um people's eyes a, a lady who came up with it she had been through traumatic experiences and she noticed that when the memories of that experience came up in her her eyes were moving back and forth without involuntarily she wasn't trying to do it and then she thought well maybe i could use that to force the memories to come up so that i could process them so now they have a therapy where they have you watch uh, there are a few different ways you can do it they have you watch a a light going back and forth and you look at it with your eyeballs um and it it te- i i haven't studied it it's a long expensive training but the people who told me about it say that it kind of gets to the memories that are embedded in your head in in your body you know like if you if you're thinking about if you're having anxiety sometimes like you get a stomach ache or a headache because the memories are stuck physically in your body and this treatment kind of like loosens them up and then you can talk about it with your therapist and once you talk about something sometimes it's not as traumatic anymore like just because it's out there in the open you're not keeping it all inside So that's a, a therapy that they say really really works well. So you could maybe look that up. Um that's one that's supposed to be helpful. But definitely just talking about it with a loved one before you're ready to go see a therapist um and just talking about it with the therapist. Some people write about it in a journal. Those are some ways that can be helpful from what I experienced and hear. Does that help? What if um what if Miss Ami if your trauma uh still haunts you continuously in your sleep like it makes you um 
something that you try to forget that but in your sleep it's it it becomes a nightmare how did you cope up in that situation i think that you have to work on it in the daytime because otherwise I, i've told people you might never unfortunately you might never be able to forget that traumatic experience all the way like you'll never think about it ever again but i like to say instead of it staring you in the face all the time constantly thinking about it or, or thinking about it every single night in a nightmare it might move to the back of your brain where it only pops up every once in a while where you you know you might think about it it won't always constantly haunt you every night if you do the work if you talk to a therapist about it if you talk to somebody that you trust your best friend or you know your parents but like really i think it, it it's going to continue to haunt you unless you work on it with somebody it's very important because i've been there myself it's it's awful to have nightmares i'm sorry that you're going through that but i really encourage you to talk with someone about it and if you if you find that you forget the nightmare once you wake up that does make it hard to work on it then in the daytime so you might write it down in the middle of the night when you wake up or in the morning if you can still remember it then it'll be there on paper and then you can process it with somebody does that answer your question yes yes ma'am thank you for your information you're thank welcome you. i hope it gets better Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Amy, for sharing your valuable experience. You're welcome. And, uh, and also, uh, I would like to thank everyone to uh, you know, come in this evening and recognizing the importance of mental health. And so we all have an important role to play. So it starts with family only. So, so today's agenda, it's to identify the uh, problems in family talk talk to your parents talk to your elder one or the younger one if they are seeking for help communicate with them at least communicate with them definitely you will get some answers and some something will be there so we all play an important role in family so it's very important to so start with family then we can serve community as well yeah so anyone has any question or any anything to share so that we are coming to end of the session sir may i definitely sir if we keep ourselves engaged in productive work then the problems will be minimized we cannot avoid problem we cannot avoid difficult situations but keep ourselves engaged in good work because empty mind is a devil's workshop is it so sir definitely sir definitely we need to engage ourselves in some positive work in yeah. positive thoughts but we at the at one point of time we need to step back also we need to take rest that is yeah. also very important yeah yeah, yeah right, sir because excessive work and excessive can also lead to stress yeah thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you everyone so it's a good opportunity for us to have a dialogue with ma'am any ma'am and yourself good self and with good my best friends of this group yes thank you all of you so can thank i you. add something yeah sure sure so actually right uh, at present there is a positive psychology kind of thing going on in which we says to the patient that when the patient comes and says that we are having negative thoughts stress is there everybody is having stress but we cannot change the situation but we can change ourselves how to deal with the situation so yeah. that we can uh, avoid mental uh, issues to getting worsen in future we uh, we should 
first thing we should uh, take good care of our health we should do one uh, physical activity like walking yoga meditation we should eat proper we should sleep proper if the if our daily routine is uh, is in a proper way then i think the mental issues will be slow down definitely ma'am definitely and, uh, and uh, as the uh, uh, this um, due to mobile and all uh, social media uh, the communication is stop totally stop we uh like before if there is a birthday of a friend or a family member we we wait for so long that next month the this this person is going to have a birthday so we are going to call them or we will visit them but now we just open our whatsapp and we message it so it's better <laughs> if we stop those things and start uh, <laughs> because the social it's a fact fact the social interaction among the friends and family is stopped totally yes so due to this you know uh, fast pacing life you can say the social interaction is very less we yeah. are communicated uh, with everyone and on mobile of, and, then, and because of that uh, our mental health is affecting a lot right right because uh once we meet with our friends and families we enjoy we talk you know we laugh we do some random yeah. jokes so it gives an immense mm -hmm. pleasure and also really stress and negativity from your thoughts correct and we think ki agar hum apna kuch batayenge if we say ki hame ye problem ho rahi hai to samne wala will laugh on us but that is the, it is wrong thinking this is wrong agar wo aapka best friend hai aur agar aap best family member hai to he will definitely help you na right right so thank you so much for sharing this marine thank you thank you sir so anyone want to share something or we should wrap up the session ami you want to share something some thought some last words here in this session i just want to say thank you to you i think it's such a good idea to get together with people who have the similar mindset and similar passions like you mentioned um because we're stronger in numbers and we can make a change you know sharing putting together all our resources and I'd be more than happy to talk with all of you again and I'm available if you want to contact me on LinkedIn I I think it's important for us to to stay in contact with people who have similar goals we could make it happen together so thank you for putting this together and for inviting me i really enjoyed it we are also very glad that you have uh, on a short notice you have come for this uh, this community conversation to awesome. recognize and identify and to throw some lights on the you know each other experience and you are absolutely right we need to we are uh, trying to make a network and we are trying to make it a uh, mental health task force that can work in the mental health field and uh, without the similar interest we cannot do that i want to encourage all of the students the psychology students and mental health students it's really not easy to go through training but it's worth it so stick with it and know that it was hard for me it was really hard for me but i kept going because i knew the world needs more people who care about this topic so keep going good for you guys study hard but it'll be worth it thank you thank you because learning day by day gives you an edge uh, practice makes a man perfect that is a, yeah. a very good line so we right. need to practice day by day we need to learn new things either it's mental health either it's social thing either it's making relationship so every day we need to uh, analyze our whole day performance the productivity that we are doing it so don't be unproductive just think about your whole day uh, make a note of your task that you need to do i usually do that that what i need to do today sometime i cannot give myself time but yes uh, i also face stress so sometimes some coping strategies i i used to do some you know activities some breathing techniques at my workplace only at my workstation i do some breathing techniques for 5 to 10 minutes uh, so this things helps a lot so thank you thank you ami thank you everyone 
and uh, for this community conversation and we'll see you again and uh, definitely we would like to uh, welcome you again on our network so that we can connect and and share our thoughts so thank you everyone and have a good night and okay I, good night sir good night thank everyone bye 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 take care bye, -bye.